okay, you can thank me later. I took one for the team. I actually watched the Thomas Markle interview with Fox News. It's only four minutes long, so if you are overwhelmed by curiosity, don't bother. I got you covered. Um, it's four minutes of my life that I can never get back. But it um, there was nothing to it. Nothing at all. It was just Thomas Markle being Thomas Markle. Thomas Markle was asked about... Um, actually, he had an opening statement thanking everyone for his birthday wishes because he received so many well wishes for his birthday. Could you imagine the kind of person <laughs> that wished him happy birthday? Could you imagine? Just consider some of the haters on social media, right? Consider those people. Those are the kind of people that he received his happy, happy birthdays from. Um, happy birthday, well wishes, whatever you want to call it. That's where they come from. Um, and of course, when you consider that caliber of a person, then you can pretty much think of everything that comes with it. If that's not enough for you, then his um, next line had nothing to do with his birthday. He went directly to guess where? Her Majesty the Queen, to the Royal Family, Yes, he went there. This is a four-minute interview now, but it was, as I have said before, it seemed like it was coached, scripted, coerced, whatever you want to call it. And, of course, he said that he wanted to make sure that he could take this opportunity to ask the Queen. He said um, that he wants the Queen to allow Lilibeth Diana to have her christening in the... Uh, Queen's Church, that's what he called it, the Queen's Church. Uh, he wanted to make sure that the Queen considered allowing the baby to have the christening there, and um, he uh, wanted to appeal to her and to the royal family. He said, don't punish the children. The children are surely innocent. They're not political. Not political. That's what he said. And um, so that was check you know he had that one said check so he in the checklist of things that he was instructed to say allegedly then he says um i'm planning in the near future to petition the state of california for visitation rights for the grandkids that's right he said that he wants to petition the court to see the kids now as far as we know and I can't say I have any factual information, but one can only imagine. Has he seen any of his grandkids? Has he seen any of them? Has he made any effort to see any grandkids? Because there are certain parts of the family that do not want to see him. There are certain parts of the family that have never met him. Markles that have never met him. So, this is what he's saying, but the only thing that he seems concerned with are the kids that can make him money. So whether or not this is some kind of campaign by the tabloid press to try to force the kids into um, view of cameras or whatever, I don't know. It's all very strange. It seems scripted to me. And he seemed preoccupied with keeping his hands wrapped around the can in front of him. You remember, he said he was uh, upset by the fact that people uh, was, were seeing photos of him coming and going from the supermarket or grocery, whatever it was, a, a convenience shop, gas station, whatever the place was, every time you see the pictures of him, he's carrying a six pack of beer. Now he said the beer, <laughs> to show you how daft this guy is, he says that the beer is like a little gift that he gives to the security guards at, I'm, I imagine, at the gate of his gated community. He would give those uh, beers to the security guards. <laughs> how dumb can you be, or how irresponsible can you be, 
to tell people, oh, this beer is for the security guards, you know, who otherwise are on duty. <laughs> I mean, I know it's a different country and the standards are different, but I, I would imagine any place you go, security guards should not clutch a cold beer while securing the premises. But if that were the case, well, Thomas Markle <laughs> put them on the unemployment line, didn't he? Yeah, these beers are for the... Yeah, okay. Thomas, God, that mouth of yours... And then after that, he said, oh, well, the news guy asked him about Harry's book. He said, I don't, I don't think he has much more to say. He hasn't got a lot to say. <laughs> he said that um, everything he needed to say, he covered it in the three sessions and his interview with Oprah. And, of course, he decided to mock Harry by crossing his hands, those shaky, quivering beer-soaked hands, allegedly, over his uh, shoulders in that uh, self-therapy type of meditational thing that uh, Harry was doing. So he was using a little mockery there. That was the height of his cleverness. I'm pretty sure that this man who moves at a glacial pace under the best of circumstances, that was the height of his comedy for probably the entire month. So, if not the season. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Thomas think he's made of funny. Yeah. So, then after that, he, um, he said that the book would be an insult to the royals. And everything this guy says, he seems to be preoccupied with the royal family. As though he's doing Zoom calls with the queen. You know... I could just imagine this guy on a Zoom call with the Queen. And the Queen looking to her aides left and right saying, What did he say? <laughs> Pardon me? <laughs> but he's, he's not delusional. This is a crafty old fox. So there are people who feel terribly sorry for him and they buy this whole story of him being so frail and oh god this guy this guy Thomas Marco he's a gift that won't stop giving and so he's going to probably you know he's not getting as much of the news cycle as he's gotten in the past but um he, he's making money. That's all I can say. I won't even throw an allegedly on that one. He's making money. And so to close out the interview, the guy from Fox News, um, I think it was Fox News, he asked Thomas Markle, he said, you have such a beautiful home here overlooking the sea, overlooking the ocean, rather. He said, um, do you ever consider inviting Her Majesty the Queen or perhaps Prince Charles to visit you here? And believe it or not, Thomas Marco actually stepped back to the other side of the looking glass and said, well, I know you're um, kidding when you say that. He said, but sure, they're welcome here at any time. So I would stick to the Zoom calls with Her Majesty Thomas, but this is why I believe that Thomas Marco's absence at the royal wedding has done everybody a favor. Also, I will say this again, by the Duchess of Sussex refusing to invite most of her family there, that was also doing the world a favor. She knew exactly what she was doing. She knew the type and caliber of people that were involved if she had invited them. So um, good on you, Megan, for doing exactly what you knew was best to do. But don't despair, uh, Sussex Squad, because there's uh, something you need to know. Under California law, a grandparent can ask the court for a reasonable visitation with a grandchild to give a grandparent reasonable visitation with a grandchild. The court has to, one, find that there is a pre-existing relationship between grandparent and grandchild that has engendered a bond 
This means that there is such a bond between grandparent and grandchild that visitation is in best interest of the child. And, number two, balance the best interests of the child having visitation with the grandparent with the rights of the parents to make the decision about their child. <laughs> In general, grandparents cannot file for visitation rights while the grandchild's parents are married, but there are exceptions like the parents are living separately, a parent's whereabouts are unknown and have been for at least a month, one of the parents joins the grandparents' petition for visitation, the child does not live with either of his parents or the grandchild has been adopted by a step-parent. Now, I don't believe that this guy can reasonably ask a court for such a thing, but he can mention it in an interview and... <laughs> No, I was about to say something that might get me in trouble, so I won't say it. But he can ask in, in this interview, or should I say, he can say that he's going to ask in this interview. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of, uh, let's say, people in the media who would gladly pay whatever court fees and lawyer fees that this guy can stack up. But I don't know if he would have the courage to try to do that because he could stand to lose a lot, um, especially if his, let's say, alleged financial backers decide to step away from him in the 11th hour. So I say this is much to do about nothing. It's just sensationalism. I'd be impressed if it actually happened. I'd also be very pissed if it actually happened. Well, <laughs> oh gosh, what is it about? Well, I don't care what it's about. Um, apparently, Thomas Markle Jr. is joining Big Brother VIP in Australia. Big Brother VIP? He's a very important person where? Where is he an important person? If it wasn't for the Duchess of Sussex, this, what words, loser, we wouldn't even know. We wouldn't even know this person exists. This person is like some kind of character from the National Lampoon's franchise. He kind of reminds me of, um, Dennis Quaid's character in National Lampoon's Summer Vacation. Do I have the right Quaid? Okay, whatever Quaid it is. You know which one I'm speaking of. But, um, yeah, that's who he reminds me of. Just the lowest of the low. And this guy is now going to rake in some big bucks. He ain't gonna keep it long. But he's raking in some big bucks on this um, television fiasco. And I'm sure that they're hoping that during those little quiet, intimate times um, on the show, that like the rest of the grifters that appear on those um, type of reality shows, that he's going to talk trash about his sister. And you know what? It's not gonna take many beers to get that out of him. This is just... Do you notice you never hear from the Raglans? Do you notice that you never hear from any of the Raglans? It just doesn't happen. Well, those Markles, they sing like Aretha Franklin. All you got to do is slip them a couple of bucks and everybody's got something to say. You hear from Thomas Markle more than you hear from the Duchess of Sussex. And now Thomas Markle Jr. is going to appear on Big Brother, Australia, VIP. Oh, God. Um, well, I guess I'm sorry to start your day off like this, but you had to know. <laughs> you, 
Yeah, it's everywhere. What can I say? It's everywhere. This is like a two-pronged attack, isn't it? You got senior and junior on each side um, coming together in the middle to make as much bad publicity, as much trouble as that. <sighs> I'm going to need some more coffee. I just had a really gruesome thought. Actually, it's kind of a fun thought. What if some kind of romance breaks out between um, Thomas Markle Jr. and Caitlyn Jenner? Wouldn't that be... Uh... <laughs> so, suddenly, I don't mind. Yeah, suddenly, I don't mind. Now, I might watch that one. If that happens... I have never watched the Big Brother program in my life. If you have, that's on you. I'm not a big fan of reality TV, but there's a good opportunity for me to find entertainment in Thomas Markle Jr. Um, you know, sparking a romance <laughs> with Caitlyn Jenner. Now that's rich. If the, yeah, please make it happen. Please make that happen. Um. Ooh. <laughs> but Caitlyn's not actually the first of her kind on the show. As a matter of fact, um, uh, gosh. Well, no, I think that was a different version of um, the reality show. The one that featured, um, oh, well, never mind. But anyway, that person has a YouTube channel, and she was also, you know, the gossip. She was also on the, uh, anyway, I gotta go before I get in trouble. <laughs>